everybody! Welcome back to the Dumbest Modeling Channel on all of YouTube, Pitstain Hobbies. We're back on the Agora Models Aston Martin No Time to Die DB5 from 007. That was a mouthful. Um, we got Pack 5 here. Came in lickety split via laser ship from Florida to lovely old Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, uh, the nice black interior with the James Bond stuff going on. And parts, parts, give me parts, parts. What do we got here? Uh, we're starting with 31. It comes in a nice little box. I like the Agora packaging. Uh, they package efficiently. I mean, there's a lot of plastic, but there's always going to be plastic. You can't get rid of plastic. Try as you might, there is no argument. But they pack everything in the, the most efficient size box available. It's very nice because my boxes pile up very fast in the basement um <laughs> i may have a problem uh, i have a few problems but some of them are you know things you can identify and other ones come out during my annual physical to doctor here is 31 um while i'm sliding this lovely piece of metal out of a box click the links below to agora models helps out the channel and it helps you find this amazing model kit which is so much better than the previous db5 that was released by other companies, um, oh my god, I saw a com uh, comparison of the wheels. Oh boy, these Agora wheels are absolute works of art compared to the previous ones, both in scale accuracy and sheer beauty. They're just lovely. So we're gonna get a little cardboard and let's just get rid of that. There is a pack of screws in that box, so be careful not to lose them. Hey, click the links below and also uh, to my Amazon, I have an Amazon link where I have a lot of my tools and supplies and things, including these horrifically overpriced Makita pliers um, that are very much like my Kanipex Cobras, but because I think people might know, I'm a Makita fanboy. And uh, if, if some particular YouTuber makes these with a neon, like a bright green handle set dipped, it's got to be this mechanism though, Steve. Maker's Cave, our friends at the Maker's Cave. Google, well, search Google. Search that on YouTube. Great channel, a lot of 3D printing stuff, also building Partworks kits. Cool dude. His wife Katrina is awesome. Um, but yeah, if they could make a set of these with their logo and some green handles, I'll buy two. There you go. Gauntlet down, buddy. Little little challenge between friends is always fun. And we've got this lovely, basically the back of the chassis and the trunk floor. There's some little openings in here. I wonder what goes in there later. That should be fun. Well, I'll put that aside, and we've got some D... Uh, these little baggies are a little hard to read. DSO2 screws. Take my word on that. We're going to bring over our previously assembled chassis. And we're going to put this thing kind of... Eh? Meh. Upside down, and then this this way, and then this fits right there. And then we're going to uh, scroll through our PDF and get three DSO2 screws. One, two, three. Don't forget your three-in-one oil. Pump that thing up and get a little primed. And we'll rip open these screws and get crack a lack in here. I'll be right back with these three screws in. All right, well, you know, I'll do at least one screw on camera. Dippy, dippy in the hole and all so far all the holes have been threaded very nicely uh i just use the oil out of an ab an abundance of caution you know you know they say out of an abundance of caution we're doing this thing uh sometimes it's a good idea and sometimes you're like i don't like that this is okay this is fine and look at that that's the whole whole chassis pan right there and uh, our, oh, the rack and pinion on this thing is so sweet. It's really nice. I like it a lot. Steering wheel's on the wrong side of the car for some reason. I don't know what the hell those Brits were thinking. I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, they do drive on the wrong side of the road. Uh, I think, I don't know, who invented, oh, well, the Germans invented the first internal, but what side is their steering wheel on? No, I think they, they do on, the, they drive on the correct side of the road. I don't know. Arguments can be had in the comments. Please keep it civil, though. Uh, next thing, stage 30. Uh, 31. Stage 32 now. Let's see here. 
Rear axle. Ooh, exciting. Let's get these parts out. Uh, I'm going to put this aside for now. It's going to go into the go into the spray booth and just hang out over there while we shake everything to the bottom. It's kind of like a packet of uh, artificial sweetener at the restaurant. You just shake it all down to the bottom before opening the top and then gently sprinkling out your desired contents. Our plastic is empty. Okay. Got a couple of little metal, uh, there, there's some splines on one end of each of these rods. There's a little plastic bushing doodad. Uh, we got our little, our little diff cover. That's, that's really nice actually. Yeah, it's a pretty nice little diff cover right there. I wonder if this thing's got a panhard bar or a Watts linkage in the back. Now I'm just getting nerdy. Now, the bottom of this chassis tube is plastic, and the top is very metal. It's so metal, dude. Oh! And they, they fit together beautifully. So you got half plastic, half metal. That's fine. I don't care. We don't want the car to weigh 900 pounds. And you got some PS25 screws. And some more DSO2 screws. And some uh, uh, PS11 screws. Let's see what we do with them. Uh, okay, there we go. We're going to take the metal half of this sucker. Put that down there. We're going to cut open the bag with the uh, metal rods and the little bushing things. Let's see what these are made out of. Yeah, they're plastic. And uh, we're going to put them in the tubes, like so. And I want kind of like that, that kind of wider end facing out. We'll just put those in there. They do it all with tweezers. But in the instructions, I see the tip of some dirty human fingers. There we go. <clears throat> and uh, we gotta, we got to then shove. Let's just uh, enhance. Enhance. Okay. So we're going to take one of these plastic bushings out of here. So we've got to uh, put one of these splined ends into this plastic thing. I'd say just... By the power of gray skull. Okay. Just push down a little on that and get it in there. This is... I'm... I'm curious what's going on here. Put this flying into the hole and press into the cap. Let's put the other side in. Yeah, so the cap is closed on one end, opened on the other. So you want the opened end facing. Focus here. You want the opened end facing out that way. Then you take the splined end of the shaft in the hole, center it in the little cap, and then like gravity and your muscles do the talking there uh, those are in there we go very nice and I didn't, I didn't break out the hammer so uh, check the pins are firmly yes they slide back and forth without coming loose so that's good and then uh, we want to put the axle cover on here so we're going to take it like this and just slide her down onto there. And we're going to take a couple of these little PS11 screws. And that cover is plastic. So we don't need any additional lube. And we'll want to just hold on to it like that. Get these in here. You don't need to go super tight. So how is everybody's weekend? I got a, I got a pretty nice Easter basket. I got like a whole bunch of Reese's peanut butter eggs. Oh god, I love Reese's peanut butter eggs. Those are so good. I don't know about the, about anyone watching over the UK. You got the Cadbury things. What's your favorite candy? I'm pretty big on the Reese's peanut butter stuffed things. Uh, back to that, we're going to take the plastic half of our axle tube assembly, 
and uh, make sure these things are, I guess, you know, in their little tracks. And then we're gonna we're gonna snap this down in the place. It does fit nicely. These are we. What is going on here with these little? I have no idea. You know, there's a plan. And then we're gonna get uh, DSO two screws. We've got a couple left over DSO twos from uh, stage thirty one. And then we'll take a couple more DSO twos out of this little pouch. There we go. Satchel. Yeah. Oh, what is that? A purse? No, it's a satchel. Indiana Jones has one. Name the movie, win a prize. Basically, name the movie and then <laughs> just email me at pitstainhobbies at gmail.com for a sticker. There we go. And uh, I got three more of these to put in, and uh, I don't think anyone wants to hear more of my lip flapping. I had a comment recently that somebody said, too much talk. And I'm like, well, if you can't even come up with a full sentence, I can't really take the criticism seriously. You know, well-written criticism is, is, is acted upon immediately here. We take it very seriously. I'll be right back. Okay, those screws are in now. And that's nice. We're going to flip our axle over. We have one very obvious hole right here. That hole, she needs a filling. And it's going to be with a PS25 screw. And that's going in the plastic, so no need for oil there. Oh, oh, come on. Ah, I want to save my spare screws properly. Come on, man. Go back in your, go back in your satchel. There we go. Sachet. I don't know. There's a lot of terms for little packets. I'm going to throw that in there. There we go. And that's ah, toyed enough. And there we go. There's a little axle. Looks quite nice. Quite happy with that. I have no idea. You know, I know about you know semi-floating axles uh, being able to slide in and out a little bit, but these are these are pokey bits. <gasps> are they? No, no, those can't be for spinner tire cutter thingamaj. No, I don't. I have no idea. We'll find out when we find out. You'll know when I know, everybody. You will indeed. Um, and then uh, yeah, stage thirty-two is done now. And uh, stage 33, let's get that out. That looks like it's got a bunch of little bits in it. Here we go. Now, this is going to be the right, the rear right brake disc assembly. Way to interrupt me. Text message noise. Thank you. You know, you got to remember to put your phone on silent. But if you do that, you know, an emergency could happen. And, you know. Things can happen. And I do have special needs bulldogs. And one of them, well, well just one special needs. The other one's just special. Um, but yeah, he does have epilepsy. So if something goes sideways, you know, I can't not have, you know, my dad's still in the you know, nursing home, you know, recovering and uh, all that. But yeah, I can't really ever put my phone on silent. It's sort of like impossible. That's my stage in life. There we go. We got some trailing arms. We got another brake caliper. Oh, guess we got to break out the gold paint. Got to be consistent. So I'll get that painted, and then we will continue with stage 33. And uh, hold on, let me just scroll these instructions. Let me just not even scroll through the instructions. Let me just go through my parts. Yeah, stage 34. Yes, there's another caliper. I'm going to get these both painted at once, you know, for uh, time efficiency and all that. Let me just squeeze that sucker out. Oh, there it is. I don't know if anyone saw it yet. 34 is the other brake rotor. <clears throat> so I'm going to get those painted gold, and I'll be right back. All right, well, hey, well, let's get a little spray booth action going here. I got a new sticker in the booth. Look at that. It's my buddy, uh, my buddy Eric. Um, and these luckily have the R and L on the back of the caliper. I like that. I'm just going to get a little Tamiya gold leaf going here. A little dabble, do you? Good. Nice. A little more here. There we go. I think this airbrush is in my Amazon store link shopping list doodad. I'm not sure. 
This is a, a Tamiya, uh, a Tamiya Spraywork 74-545, uh, Spraywork like 3 HG Ultrafine, 0.2 nozzle. It's a nice little airbrush. I like it. I've had it for years. Okay, well, these got to dry a bit. I love this. <laughs> this paste spray booth's awesome. All right, we'll be right back. All right, well, that caliper's painted. So is the other one. I used a Tamiya X12 Gold Leaf <clears throat> and a tiny little misting of Mr. Super Clear Matte um, in the Pit Stain Spray Booth. Ah, so nice. Not having to stink wafting upstairs or into my lungs and slowly killing me. And, you know, there's many other things that are probably doing the same thing. So we're going to take this backing plate here. No, nope. we're gonna take. No, we're gonna take this fella here, and we're gonna get this little circle right there. And there's a little pin on this part, and get those fitted together. Is that it? There we go. That looks like it. Okay, good. No, that doesn't look right. Let's get that. Hold on a second. Right, right. Eh, eh, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, that's why. This goes through this way. And then, and then, then all four of these little tabs line up with screws. So that's good. Then we take that, put that there. Then we're going to take this part. And, oh, for God's sake. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. There we go. Uh, bookkeeping. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna shove this into here. Okay. And we need the R. This is so hard to focus on because it's silver. We need the R this way. And then we're going to take this thing again. I'm going to take this R and that R. So they're both pretty vertical-ish. We're going to get these sandwiched together, rotate this thing a bit. And then, oh boy, okay. And get it like that. Line up the holes. And then we need four of these itty-bitty PS34 screws in there. Um... Delicate procedure. I'm gonna uh, do that real quick, and oh, well, let me let me get at least one of them in. <clears throat> uh, wait a second. There's only three. Uh, hmm. Wonder if there's any extra PS34s. Uh, PS32, PS3, PS4. 28, 24. No. No. It's 14. Oh. Oh. Wrong silver screws. These are the PS34s. It's a little hard to read the labels. I'm just going to put those over here for now. Um. <clears throat> These are so damn tiny. These are the PS... Oh my god, they're so small. PS34 screws. Let's get our littler screwdriver out. Got the PH0 screwdriver. Focus! I don't know what's going on? It's all the silver parts. And we're going to... Carefully... To line up our holes. And then... Oh! Oh my god. Oh, oh. There we go. Once you get one in, it's going to locate everything and you're good to go. We're going to get the other three, other three screws in there and we'll be right back. All right. Our four screws are in. Looking good. We're going to take our little brake caliper now, marked R. Put it over these two. Uh, there we go. Put it over these two holes. <clears throat> And then get a couple of these little PS21 screws. That was a first 
screws we incorrectly pulled out. That was my fault for not reading the screw bag correctly. Get those <clears throat> tightened in. A lot of throat clearing tonight, guys. Sorry about that. There's that throat clearing guy. I don't know if he watches anymore. He might have gotten fed up and unsubscribed or something. I don't know. It's a shame. And, 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 and then, there we go. We got a nice little assembly there. Okay. Good. Moving on. We're going to take this <clears throat> and we are going to put it on here. Oh, look at that. It fits in perfect just like that. See, there's that pin. And a little, little axle stub is sticking out of there. <coughs> and then we're going to get a couple of PS14 screws, which will probably be pretty small there we go these little these little fellas get a couple of those in there come on there we go keep the spare in reserve to go into the uh, parts bag and then we'll want to hold that in and uh, get this fella in its little hole Okay, this is kind of cool. All right. And uh, where's black work surface, black screw. There it is. Yeah, gotcha. Everyone saw where the screw was. They're yelling at me. It's right over there. It's over there. Of course, it's, it's always over there. When you can't find something, according to my friend Buck, it's always over there. <clears throat> That's a... Uh, Buckman's Model Mania channel on YouTube. Such a smart ass. Love the guy. Um, so we got those two screwed in, and now our uh, rear brake rotor and caliper is firmly affixed to the axle tube, just how we want it. And now we're going to take this little suspension bracket, and uh, does it have an orientation in particular? It doesn't appear to. So it's just gonna go right in, right in there. Okay, squeeze it right in, nice and snug fit. And then with this going this way and this going this way, we wanna get one of our knurled pins in here. Oh dear, oh dear. I don't have the best track record with these knurled pins. Let's see here. Oh, it's the plastic side. Okay. So we're going to get it into that little hole there. All right. And I'm uh, going to grab some pliers. <clears throat> Squeeze it in. Nice and easy. Okay. Perfect. That's very solid. That is in there quite firmly. Now we're going to take this and we're going to take one of these trailing arms or control arms or whatever they are. Uh, I don't know. This is this. Song. Oh, this. Yeah, this looks like a parallel four link suspension. But either way, we're going to take one of these arms with this little boss sticking out towards the brake rotor. And now we've got to shove another knurled pin. Oh boy. Shove another knurled pin in. Yeah, let's see here. So we're going to get that in there and then shove a knurled pin in that hole and get it through that plastic. And now, well, there's all sorts of dings and dongs happening. That's all happening there. Let's take our new. Uh, Makita version of Knipex pliers. And give it a squeeze. And there we go. It's in and it moves. Yeah. <laughs> you figure hey, Makita makes a pair of 
Knipex knockoffs, basically. I'm going to buy them because I'm, uh, I'm quite the fanboy. Okay, so that's done. <clears throat> and now we're going to take this other one here. Same thing with the boss little thing. Ah, focus. Facing outwards. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to shove a, a knurled pin through there. I'll be right back. Alrighty then. So that's that one in. And actually went in a little easier than the, the first one. Um, so there's our link bars. Now we're going to take our shock. And it's got little uh, little little wings on there. It only fits in one way into that hole. Then we're going to take uh, one of our PS11 screws with a little... Uh, a little lip on it it's pretty easy to pretty easy to spot and get that screwed in and uh, let the screw do the walking don't press too hard on it because you got to press in on the shock sh body itself and once you've got it in there ah, we'll firm it up a little and there's our there's our shock and you can see kind of how the suspension is going to operate like a traditional uh, you know trailing four link suspension Parallel four links, no triangulation here. No triangulation means there will be some sort of centering rod, like a pan hard bar. Um, probably not a Watts linkage, but who knows? Maybe we'll be shocked. It's probably a pan hard bar. I'm just nerding out on suspension talk now, so uh, either way, we're going to do the exact same procedure in the reverse on this side. So <clears throat> I was pretty detailed on this one. So I'm just going to kind of put that one on there. I don't think anyone should be uh, let down. If I find something that's like totally different doing this side, I will absolutely record it. Otherwise, it's the exact opposite of this. So, you know, those things facing out, shock there, caliper at the front of the axle because that's where the drive shaft goes to the transmission. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so that went together exactly as we suspected. The left side is identical to the right side, just the opposite. Uh, so same exact procedure. <clears throat> there we go. Ah, more throat clearing. <laughs> Sorry. Here's stage 35. We've got some springs and some more control arms and a drive shaft and some doodads. I have no, the, no idea what the heck they are yet. But let's slice her open and just always check. Make sure you don't have any parts hiding away in there, or screw patched pouches, or satchels, or sachets, or baggies, whatever you want to call them. We've got a very static drive shaft with a couple of mounting bosses on it, which is fine. And some screws, and some more screws, and some more screws, and a couple more uh, little control arms. Is this thing going to have triangulated center links somehow? I'm not sure. Or is it going to have... Oh my god! It has a freaking Watts linkage! Holy hell! Oh my... Okay, that... That right there is just so sick. I love... I have a... I built a Watts linkage for the solid axle on the rear of my F-150 Lightning. Uh, but I did an offset three-link suspension instead of a parallel four-link suspension. And I'm going way car nerd right now. Because this is suspension engineering beauty right here. Um, if you use a panhard bar, okay, and you have a single bar, okay, bars run on an arc. And when the suspension goes up and down on a solid axle, let's do it this way, okay, the arc goes like that. So when the suspension goes up and down, it's actually kind of going a little left and right. And it doesn't keep your axle perfectly centered under your chassis but you'll see when i'm done with this um with a watts linkage because this is the football this is the center it keeps the axle perfectly centered as it goes up and down and you'll see the action of how this all works this is i'm car nerding hard on the watts linkage and agora may not want to highlight this because it's so car nerdy but Damn, Aston Martin, you threw a Watts linkage in this thing? The DB5 already now god tier in my book. Once you throw a Watts linkage in the back of a car, 
you're just you're just at another level. Uh, sorry about that. I had it had to I I had to say it. Couldn't avoid it. We've got a couple springs here. Watts linkage. Holy. Okay, people are gonna be making fun of me now. They're gonna be like Watts linkage. Watts linkage. I I swear to God, I love Watts linkages as much as I love Makita tools. I'm gonna throw a couple of springs on here. Well, <laughs> Watts link. You gotta be kidding me. And I don't even know what these things are yet, but they're probably some cool other suspension component that I'm totally not expecting. Um, okay. Well, Watts linkage. <laughs> Here we go. I'm gonna. I. <laughs> I can already hear people making fun of me for saying Watts linkage like 500 times in this video, but a lot of people building this car may not be familiar with that suspension design. And now everyone's going to go Googling Watts linkage. And it's W-A-T-T -T apostrophe S linkage. And it was on the uh, the Jaguar Type C Le Mans race car. And that one, I think, was it a Type C? I think it was a Type C. Type a, No, a Type C. And that was like a Le Mans winning car. That was an amazing. And that was an offset three link. We could get into a suspension. Oh, God, I could go deep, deep down this rabbit hole. Let's do it in the comments, though, okay? Uh, if you know what a Watts linkage is, uh, hit me below in the comments. We're going to take this fella. We're going to get our springs in their little pockets right here and here. We're going to get our little control arms. They go into four little, there's little holes here to hold them in. Uh, I don't think it's it's worth it right now. Locating, oh my gosh. That is so cool. That is so cool. That is so very, very cool. Okay, so right now we're just going to get those springs into place. We're going to flip it back over. And we're going to make sure that our shocks go into these holes here. Ah. Oh! This is the coolest suspension of any part work car I've ever built, or ever will build, most likely. A Watts linkage. you got to be kidding me. Okay, we need PS11 screws. Freaking Watts linkage. Agora. Really? I don't know what was underneath the previous... I don't know who made the previous uh, DB5 model, but... Uh, a Watts linkage? These are those shouldered screws, the PS11s. We're going to get one of these guys in here. Screw that down. Agora, you win. You win the internet today for having a Watts linkage in the back of your DB5. I swear, I am so flabbergasted and impressed. I don't know if World of Wayne is as much of a car nerd as I am. But this is God tier accuracy. I want to look underneath a real DB5 now. I was at the Peterson Museum for the Bond of Motion exhibit. I did not lay on the floor and look underneath the rear end of the DB5 because I'm like, eh, probably leaf springs, who knows, whatever. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. This is this is going on. This is going to be a long video of me just talking about Watts linkages and how awesome they are. It's ab I'm drooling. Ab it's it's coming out of my it's just dribbling out uh, with my brains. Okay, now we got to get these little control arms in here. Uh, so the top one, there's there's some fairly good size. See those little? Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see that opening right there. There's two of them, one on top of the other, and you're gonna get the the top one in in the top hole. Come on, come in, game it, get in there. Hold on a second. One moment, please. Uh, let's get a screwdriver here. And we'll just kind of pop her in the hole. There we go. Oh, yep. Come on. Oh. Are we going to... I'm, I'm, I'm flailing a little bit. With, I'm so excited. I've lost my composure. Okay, so... Uh, oh, okay. It's a little bit of a snug fit. Once you get in the hole, you'll see it right in there. 
And now we're gonna use more PS11 screws, which is probably why they gave us so damn many of them. Let's see, what is this? Let's see, we got a couple PS11s in that bag. And we're gonna need, f uh, not five, but four PS11s. And let's, uh, let's do this. Let's get, a, let's get a little pry tool on the back of it. And get a screw going in there. Oh my god, a watts linkage. Okay, and now we're going to do the same with the other four. We're going to get them, get them in their holes. And get another screw, and then, you know, put something in there. You could use your finger also um, to hold it in there, and then just get that other screw in there. Once you have it started, you're good. Oh my god, a watts linkage. I am losing my marbles over that. I'm going to get these other two screws in, and I will be right back. Okay. So we've got all of our, our trailing arms are bolted in. All right, now we got to install the drive shaft. So we got the drive shaft here. The longer part is going to go that way, and there's two bosses here and two bosses here. And we're going to we're going to get her get her into the snout of the rear axle and then bolt and then push her in there. Okay, and then we need a couple of PS25 screws. Which are no, not those. These are these are PS twenty fives. Get oh well, well three whatever okay. Oh, I can't even say it with me, everybody. Watts linkage. Oh my God, they did not have to do this. I mean, the model kit, yeah, you know, the suspension goes up and down, and in the real car. You want to control this side-to-side -side motion because it causes instability in the handling. But they, they, I can't believe it. I am, I just, I, I'm, okay. Sorry, Agora. I, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, you know, fluff their pillow too much here, but color me impressed with, with that level of detail. If someone has the previous DB5 from a company that I'll show, not be named, I don't know who made it, whatever. It was the, like, the, 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 the uh, uh, Spy Who Loved Me. I don't know. It was, not Spy Who Loved Me. It was, it was like, you know, one of the original Goldfinger. That was it. Gold, it was the Goldfinger DB5, I think. Not nearly as accurate. Please send me a picture of your rear axle. I want to know. I need to know. Oh, I got my friend Todd. He built it. He has one. He built it years and years ago. Oh. I gotta know. I... Uh, I don't know. Okay, so now, Ian, calm down. Ian, did you take your meds today, Ian? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's see here. Flip her over. <clears throat> I'm going to take these weird doohickeys. And there's a right and a left. And this one says L. And let's just turn it around in the same direction as the instructions. And the R will go on these two posts here and the L goes on these two posts here oh what the heck are the I almost think these are ride height sensors but they're not they're like some extra weird damper thing I am honestly not super familiar with I would really have to I really need to study the rear suspension design of the Aston Martin DB5 I'm thoroughly intrigued now those are very cool. This is a very cool suspension. It's a stable. Oh, this is the anti-roll bar, basically. <clears throat> so instead of like a metal sway bar, like in the front, an anti-roll bar, they have these units to control body. You just keep impressing me more and more, DB5. I had no darn idea. I didn't have a damn clue. How cool the rear suspension of this car is. I'm so hardcore nerding on this thing right now. Let's get a PS25 screw in there. That is so cool. Okay. They're not like literally attached to the axle, but there is like a tab 
you know, inferring they're attached. And for for a model part work kit, that's that's a pretty sick level of attention to detail right there. This this is by far I don't care when the body's on and all the interior bits are in and the lights are on and it has a remote and it's doing its thing. This right here is the coolest damn part of this model is the suspension on it. I am so shocked at the attention to detail that's been put into this. It's mind-blowing. And now we're putting together my favorite part. Say it with me, everybody. What's linkage? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two. Thanks for the text message, whoever that was. Not that I'm recording. I'm going to take these two links here. And uh, we're going to zoom in on this because this is so cool. All right. So we're going to take this part here and one of these here. And I don't think the direction really matters. We're going to put a PS25 in there. Is this a PS25? These are the PS25s. Here we go. Just, just, just come out of there. Just come out of your baggie. Of course. And now I just throw it across the workbench, which is, you know, par for the course. This is very cool. I'm spending some extra time on this because I love this rear suspension. I don't care if this episode is an hour long and don't tighten it too much. I want it to, yeah, there we go. I want it to move freely. We don't want any bind in our <laughs> Watts linkage. <laughs> I am a... I, <laughs> I got problems. Okay, now take this this other little nubbin. And we're going to take another one of these suspension arms. And uh, we're going to put another PS25 in our Watts linkage. I'm so excited. The... This, I'm building a scale Watts linkage. This is the coolest thing ever. Like, I can't even. Like, no other no other YouTube channel is going to freak out this much over the Watts linkage. Like, it, it's, it's such a unique suspension design. It's on so few cars. Uh, let's see here. Did they even... So it says assembling. Take the transverse stabilizer bars. One has a large hole. So they don't they don't even call it a Watts linkage in the instructions. They call it transverse stabilizer bars. Maybe that was in, you know, the the Aston Martin, you know, uh, technical manuals or something. But holy God. Okay. So we got our two bars assembled here. With their little mounts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this one in this orientation with, as I call it, the football. That's the nickname uh, us Americans have given it. We're going to snap that on there. I'm going to take this one in this orientation and snap it onto its side of the football. Huh. Oh, do I have that? No. Are these are these different? Hold on a second. One moment, please. Let's see here. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's fine. So the football is uh specific. There are bigger posts. There are bigger posts on the football for this side and then smaller posts on the football for this side. What do they call the football? The stabilized bar connection and align the bars with it. The pins are connected on the small and large matching holes. Yeah, the small and large holes. See? Small and large. And just like that. And this center section, I generally call it, They could call it the propeller or the football. Man, that's cool. That is so cool. And we're going to turn... Well, we don't need to turn our chassis upside down because we've already got it upside down. And I'm going to zoom out just a tiny bit. Uh, and now I'm going to zoom back in a little bit. And there we go. Uh, we're going to place this pin 
there's a little hole there. We're going to put that there. And then this one is going to go vertically in that opening. Oh my god. I am... Let's see. We're probably going to put it this way. There we go. And the instructions call for PS14. I, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. I'm going to put a PS14 in this first. All right. I'm going to get one of those in there. Okay. Close enough. This is very, very, very cool. This is the coolest... Is the coolest part work suspension you will ever build in your entire life. What we want to do is I want to make sure, yeah, we got movement. Okay. Then we're going to put this back in its little home. We're going to put this back in its little home because we need to get a couple of PS25 screws in. And uh, do that. Oh, this is so cool. So now what we're going to do, that doesn't seem right. No, that's wrong. No, that's not right. Hold on a second. The shorter link should be that way. So the trick with a Watson linkage, the instructions are actually incorrect here. The instructions show this bar like up this bar on the top and this bar on the bottom but this is the longer link this should go to the bottom hole on the diff this is the, the shorter upper link that should go to the top hole because when you compress the suspension watch what happens level perfectly level so like you would assume when the car is sitting on the road this would be its ride height this would be fully compressed this would be fully uncompressed and this would be about ride height. And those bars are parallel with the axle and parallel with the road surface. That's where it should be. So when it goes down further, it it goes that way and it goes out that way. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm emailing Agora about that. Right here. That's how it should be. Period. Wayne, pay attention. I, uh, I'm not an engineer, but I designed one of these actual suspensions in real life and I ran it on a racetrack on my F-150 Lightning. And everyone just heard F-150 and goes, what do you mean F-150 and a racetrack? Google the 2002 Ford F-150 Lightning. And uh, yeah, oh, this is so amazingly, beautifully, oh, Aston Martin, you bloody geniuses. This is such a lovely, suspension on and then these weird little these are some sort of like gas or hydraulic dampers that act as an anti-roll bar and act independently because with a solid or axle you want as much independent wheel travel as you can get and like oh it's so cool and then that watts linkage works and I'll, I'm telling you, it works just like real life. That's exactly how they operate in real life. That is so freaking cool. I don't even want to show it this way. I want to keep it this way so I can see the cool Watts linkage set up in the back. And stage complete. After this, we're going to another wheel. Now, I said it in the last part, and I'll say it again in this part. I, I did the first wheel in part one of this build series, in pack one. And we have our easy build wheel and our, this is our easy build. And then we got our complex build wheel. And once I built the first wire spoke wheel uh, properly, by the end of it, I got the hang of it. But if I break it up and build one wheel at a time, it's just going to kind of be a little more challenging, at least for me. And I feel it would also be more challenging for others as well. Uh, to, to have to, you know, deal with that. Now, the rear wheels do actually have the little pokey bit that comes out, the little tire shredder center. So that's cool. So 
This is going to, I'm going to do a build on the, I'm going to do one build of the last three wheels and we'll show the other front wheel and then we'll do the two rear wheels and it'll be like a wheel video um, because I, I, you get in a groove with how you lace these wheels together. And guys that do it in real life, if they're making a set of four wheels, they don't just build one on Monday and then one the next Tuesday and then one three Thursdays after that. They build all four at once because the, you, you, you get muscle memory going on. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're doing. So uh, that is the <clears throat> end of this build video for, uh, what the heck are we on, pack five? Pack five. These Agora builds go so smoothly and quickly. It's almost like they're too fast. Whereas some other Partworks companies, you can feel like, oh, it's taking me forever. This is right there. Agora. Seriously. Two thumbs up. Actual Watts linkage on a scale model part work that's functional. I'm, I'm just, you've destroyed me, Agora. That is so cool. Okay. Either way, uh, I hope we get Wet Nelly soon. I know uh, uh, Wayne got it in the UK. He got the first pack of Wet Nelly. I'm dying. I'm looking forward to it. This I've gone on for 15 minutes with just this clip alone. I'm so sorry for how long this was. I'm so sorry for how many times I've said Watts linkage. But by far, this is the most scale accurate partwork suspension <clears throat> I've ever come into contact with, or ever will probably come into contact with. It's utterly phenomenal. Like, that is such a section you could just delete and save money on. This didn't need to be here. They could have just made a smooth diff cover. Nobody would have been the wiser unless you were a DB5 fanatic. And now I'm going to go stare at Google Photos of DB5 rear suspensions for the next hour while this video is uploading. Thank you for coming and uh, indulging my Watts linkage um, obsession. And I'll see you next time. Click the links below to Agora Models. Click my Amazon store. Buy me a coffee. There's a link below. Like, subscribe, comment. All the YouTube thing, guy, things I gotta say. Adios, everybody.